Hey, here we are. How are you Ready doing? Go. Thank you, Gaius. Did I say that right? Yeah, you got it right. Thank you. Gaius, Gaius. Gaius. You totally got it right. People like usually get it wrong. Name. It's not like a Roman name. You're like a warrior. It is. Thank you. Gaius. It's a, <laughs> I should have named my kids Gaius. <laughs> you know, so many people usually get it wrong. So I'm very uh, excited that you got it right. I've read history. I know that there were important people named Gaius, okay? So I kind of want to get into, I know um, the last issue of uh, Snake Eyes Dead Game is coming up on July 7th. Yes. And um, before I get into, you know, the, the finale, I kind of wanted to ask you, how did it come about that you even got involved or started with this? Uh, not, like I'm assuming like most of us, you're a big fan of G.I. Joe. Um, but yeah, but how did it come about for you to kind of have this be the story that you wanted to tell. So, so it, I'm going to, I'm going to assist me. I'm going to reach right over here real quick. Hang okay. on. Hang on. Okay. All right. um, and, and now I'll be able to have props given yes. that you just asked me this question. Um, so let me tell you something and okay. we're recording, right? We're recording. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We so, so I go back further than the average GI Joe fan. Cause I am not a young man by any shake of any stick. I am an old dude <laughs> and my GI Joe predates the real American hero by almost a decade. Right. Uh, the adventure team is what is the GI Joe that I grew up with. And that's the Eagle Eye GI Joe. And, and right here on the cover, it says Kung Fu uh, Grip. So yeah. I don't want to hear people doing race appropriation shit with me. It's on the box. <laughs> it's on the box. Yeah. Kung Fu <laughs> Grip. Okay. That's how they marketed it. And it yeah. excited us. And here's my main man right here. This is vintage. Okay. <laughs> this is now they did a different version of him that had a periscope in his eye and it was called the eagle eye gi joe and you look through it and it, it was a, it was a periscope but um <laughs> and, and 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 this gi joe fought aliens like this guy called the intruder okay yep, yep. so so this was my sandbox experience okay having having the intruder battle battle adventure team <laughs> and uh, so my love for these guys i tell people and and before comic books, I played with toys. Right. I knew toys before I knew comics. And there was no Adventure Team comics. But these are the dolls, you know. And my dad, the only time he ever kind of threw shade at me, he's like, oh, man, what are you doing? Play with dolls. Right. And it's like, oh. Action. Oh, I think entire I think the toy industry responded with action, action. figures. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but uh, in my sandbox, in my backyard, this is where it all went down with the adventure team. And I, I had the, I had a couple of these different guys. And, uh, and so the GI Joe toy is like my first love, man. This is my earliest okay. memories of kind of um, creating, uh, 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 you know, adventures, creating your own imaginary adventures, making up your own adventure with your toys. So eventually uh, in the Marvel comics, when I started to buy them as a kid there, they did full page ads promoting intruder versus joe and and john armita senior no less marvel did those ads for hasbro and put them in their comics and that's the only time that i saw gi joe with with comic books right. and oh uh, you know what I'm, I'm gonna disappear real quick hang on, hang on i'll be back in a flash i got um, you um um i would be remiss i forgot i forgot oh my gosh okay these so check these out these are, they were sold at all the department stores and in the toy lines. Oh, cool. they, they did the G.I. Joe Power Records. So these aren't really comic. Well, they are comic books. Right. So they were record albums. And, and, uh, and again, you know, my villain in the Snake Eyes adventure, when we first meet him, he's mummified. Right. And his name is Kurrigan. And if you want to know some of my experience, just stare at that cover for a little while. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. um, they did a whole line of these. They did uh you know, uh, uh, rescue headquarters, secret island, um, the stolen idol. There's a reason my dead snake eyes battles a giant serpent, also in issue three, because I'm keeping it real from my power records days. So, G.I. Joe was a huge part of my youth, and then it went away. And I didn't know why it went away. When you're a kid, you just don't understand why the toys aren't on the shelves anymore, right? You know, you just go, Oh, I guess these aren't selling anymore. Like, like, not, I didn't know if they sold well or bad, but you didn't see commercials. And, you know, I, I learned that they wound down the line. It wasn't selling as well. They had had the adventure team was created because they, the Vietnam War made it not cool to make war toys, right? right. So, so then, uh, obviously, as we all know, they finally became a giant comic book and a number one cartoon and became a global sensation with the Real American Hero line. Right. So at that point, 
you know, here I'm six and seven. The Real American Hero, now I'm 13, I'm 14. And, and Marvel Comics, that number one issue, I can remember exactly where I bought it. And I was like, wow, it's double-sized. G.I. Joe, look, there's an entire team now. And of course, then there was Snake Eyes. Right. And you go, wait, who's this cool dude, Ninja? Like, and, and it's the first time I saw a ninja kind of in military gear right. with a pistol, a gun. Like, this ninja carries. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's got a gun. Like, and, and, and I think that turned out to be kind of a, a formula that you would see that I, I followed in my life. Yeah, for sure. Mr. Pool, I'm yeah. like, oh yeah, I, 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 can, I, I can do guns, guns in, in Katanas yeah. too. Yeah. Um, so, so Snake Eyes and the entire adventure team was like, wow, they've put G.I. Joe on steroids. Like, and again, the funny thing about this is I told everybody last week when, uh, this is becoming common for me, I, I'm sorry. You're uh, gonna uh, uh, Hasbro made a red snake eyes to reflect my red snake eyes. Right. That's why, it, that's why it's called Dead Game. Dead that's Game awesome. Snake Eyes. So cool. 12 inch. Okay. Imagine being little Robbie Liefeld and you're seven years old and you're like, this is my first love. And then two weeks ago, Hasbro says, Rob, get ready because you're about to have your head explode. Yeah. We made a snake eyes that reflects your comic book. Okay. Nice. And, uh, and so, so, I mean, here it is. It says dead game. That's yeah. my comic book. And, awesome. and, and so dude, like my worlds, my youth has just exploded. And, 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 and again, the, the idea, and I did in the comic book team snake eyes with the original Joe right. and they're, they're together in issues one and issue three. And so that was my obsession. Now here's the deal. Hasbro called me. Uh, summer of 2019, and Chris Ryle, who was the publisher of IDW, called me, and an old editor of mine at Marvel Comics named John Barber, he does the G.I. Joe line, they all said, Rob, we want you to do Joe, is, we, we've had you do covers in the past, would you do a whole Snake Eyes comic book? They, they really wanted it to be Snake Eyes because they knew that the movie was going into production. Right, right. And I said, I'm in, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. So so I, so I submitted to them my story, um, Hasbro cleared it. And this is where I want to tell you hundred percent. People have to understand when you do licensed products, whether it's alien predator, terminator, star Wars, or GI Joe, that company has to obviously sign off on everything. And, and right. Hasbro is very protective of their properties like GI Joe. And even with the movie coming, they, they, they never, ever once told me no they cleared every single that's so cool that shit crazy idea i threw at them i want an undead warrior from the past to be the guy snake eyes battles like, and i it. want him to <laughs> be after this immortal you know and i want him to battle a giant serpent and oh i want to turn his costume all red i want to turn his costume all white in the snow even though i know storm shadows thing is he's all white so the entire time they could not have been kinder and more um what do you call it? Uh, accommodating. Right. That is the long winded 10 minute answer to your question. No, I mean, I love it. I mean, I think it's, you know, what I find interesting too, is that, you know, you're obviously you like, like you showed you're a fan and I, I always wonder, you know, is it easy? Does it become more difficult to write something like this when you are such a fan compared to like when you're writing something that you created or co-created, like when you have to kind of approach something as a fan, are you more, determined to make it work or is it a lot harder to kind well, that's of a great, that's a great question for me i just go uh this is my again i didn't want to tell another joe versus cobra story that was you know i wanted to do really my inspiration for this was more raiders of the lost ark right. there's an artifact it's uh and, and and here's the deal snake eyes is a weapon of war that, that may not that that's unpopular to say but that you can't walk it back he right. is an agent for a government military, um, you know, organization, and he is a soldier. Right. And so I wanted to put this soldier through his paces, a weapon of war uh, has to obtain the ultimate weapon of war, which we introduced called the dead sword. Right. And in the hands of the right guy, he, the power can be summoned. And, and the, dude, imagine like, literally it's like passing notes in class. I kind of wrote down and said, uh, I'm going to need snake eyes to wield the hammer of Thor at some point. And I was like, Oh, this isn't going to go well, but, and they pushed it back and they said, fine, we clear it. I'm like, thank you. 
Um, because again, I, I knew of the mythological Thor before I knew of the Marvel Comics Thor because my sister who's seven years older than me was doing a term paper when I was seven, she's 14 on, on you know, Greek, I mean, I'm sorry, Nor Nordic mythology right. for, for high school paper. And so I, I looked at these encyclopedia pictures of this giant warrior battling these other warriors in the snow. And I'm like, Thor. And then I knew Marvel did a Thor. So, so again, uh, Hasbro was like, yeah, he's a, he's a mythological, you know, figure of legend and, and we can, we, we can clear access to that. And, and again, it, to answer your question, for me, I just wanted to go wild and bonkers and crazy. Right. So the hammer of Thor, a giant serpent. I mean, snake eyes is offered up to the giant serpent as a sacrifice in issue three. Um, um, to, to, to ultimately uncover where the dead sword is hidden. Um, right. And so, so I just went crazy and let the other pieces fit around it, like Scarlet, like, like Baroness, like Destro. And they said they cleared it all. I couldn't be more thrilled. And, and without question, this was my favorite professional experience of my 34 wow. comic book career. Easy. That is, that's amazing to say, because you've done, I mean, you've done so much. I mean, that's a really... That's really cool to say, actually. I mean, it's the truth. It's the, awesome. it was as smooth and as comfortable and as accommodating and as fun as any project I've ever done. Yeah, so I mean, because it seems like you had so much freedom. Like, like even when you thought that they were going to be like, "Oh no, you can't do that," yeah. or no, "That's not going to work," they kept going like, "No, just you know, they just let you be you." And that's that's, it. that's the best thing you can ask for as like a writer, like or a creator of anything. And, yeah. and I think, and I think they got the most out of it. To be honest, yeah, that yeah. they got my best work. Yeah. Um. It, that's how it works, man. When 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 the publisher and the talent uh, war, have a great relationship, it, it results in I, th I think really strong product. And yeah. you know, uh, I I I we sent the trade paperback to print this week. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to clear that. So I mean, my career now. I twenty years ago, you know, fourteen years into my career, I realized that collections were becoming more and more important in people's you know they're in their own collections getting something in a trade paperback or a hardcover right and getting on that bookshelf is what it's all about now and so that's where my focus started re re really came into to, to, i honed my focus was to creating you know contained adventures collected editions and so knowing that in november all five issues will be in a trade paperback and it'll be on my shelf and and then it exists at that point for the rest of time. I mean, until they stop publishing things, right. but it'll be in the canon. It'll be in the, in the library of GI Joe. Yeah. And, and, and so that, that's, that really, that excites me again. And I did, I did my, I did my young self a solid. I right. young, young Robbie Liefeld was never out of sight or out of mind with every page I did. Oh, thank, that's awesome. That's so cool. Um, so as you, as you come up on that, I mean, you've gotten to collaborate with a lot of really good people on this. And as you're we're coming up on the finale, you know, I think kind of sometimes we forget since, you know, you're good at what you do, that we forget that there are people that you want to collaborate with, okay. that, people that you admire. And um, so what was it kind of like this, this, the collaborative effort, putting all of it together and then leading up to where it ends now? Well, no, th this is a great question. And it's, it's the one that I have the most fun answering because this was nothing short of a blast. I, uh, I, here's the deal. We are, an, as an industry, as a comic book industry, we are way more invested in issue number ones right. than we are in the final chapters of anything. Right. The closing chapter never gets as much fanfare. It's always about the premiere, the premiere, the premiere. So I decided, well, nothing in the story is going to change, but I can change the way I present it. And I'm going to tell you, it came down to one guy. If this one guy turned me down, I don't think I would have pursued it. Right. But um, the single best comic book illustrator in the history of time and space is named neil adams and he uh his batman his green lantern his x-men but most importantly the only time he ever drew a superman story he did tons of covers right. but superman versus muhammad ali to this day is the single most beautifully rendered illustrated comic book i've ever seen it it, it never fails it's like it, it 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 beats everything everyone is doing right now myself included it is Neil Adams, peak Neil Adams just is like Michael Jordan. He just dunks on everybody. So having gotten to know Neil over my career, being very friendly with him, but really in the last decade doing the convention circuit as heavy as I did. And there were always times in the day 
that I wanted to go and sit next to Neil and talk to Neil about his time in the comics because I was much more interested in in stories from that time. Right. And Neil, I, I would say, hey, Neil, I saw that you inked John Buscema on this Tarzan, or I saw that you inked Gil Kane on this Conan, and I saw that you inked Gene Colan. And he's like, of course I did, Rob. He goes, I'm everybody's best inker ever. And he goes, if, if, if they had somebody ink them, it was never as good as, and, and I'm telling you, he's not lying, okay? Those jobs I just told you, Neil Adams inking Gil Kane on Conan, holy crap. <laughs> Neil Adams inking John Buscema on Tarzan is like, it's gorgeous. And so uh, I, 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 it was my dream that he would ink me. This dude is 80. Neil yeah. was 80 years old. Uh, I called him up. I said, Neil, I want to do a jam issue. Um, of, I want the last issue of Snake Eyes. I'm getting everybody uh, that I know and respect and love, who mainly who, who haven't inked me before, to jam with me on this. And he said, Rob, not only will I do it, I want to do two pages, not one. Give me a big spread. And I'm like, no way. So, <laughs> so I immediately went about constructing what I thought was the most ex exciting. I had kind of had thumbnails and I said, this is the spread. This is what I'll give Neil. Neil and, uh, and I'm going to be honest. It makes all the difference in the world when you pick up the phone and you call anyone else. When you say, oh, Neil Adams is already on board. Neil Adams is on board. The greatest of all time is on board. Right. And uh, so nobody, everyone from that point said, yes, 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 I'll do it. I'll do it. And I just built up this great, you know, uh, army of artists like Philip Tan, like Ed, Ed Piscor, like Jim Rugg, like Tom Scioli, Jerry Ordway, Wills Portacio, my former, you know, uh, image partner. Um, and, and, and Wilson and I have collaborated a lot over the years, but he's never inked me. So it became really easy. Everybody said yes. I had to accommodate a lot of different schedules. Right. Um, um, and, and for instance, Kevin freaking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Eastman. Yeah. <laughs> he, the Turtles is also published by IDW. Yep. So I could not have him ink anything until he was done with the third issue of his new Turtles project, because that would not have been cool. Right. Um, uh, IDW would have flipped out. So, so we, he, he, he snuck that in at the end in between three ending and his last issue of the turtles, the last Ronin. So, but man blew me away. I mean, getting inked by Neil Adams and getting inked by Kevin Eastman and Jerry Ordway and Carl Kiesel and Wills Portacio, just, it, it makes for so much fun. And, um, I don't, I don't think I'm speaking out of school here. I can tell you, we're going to do just a line art version of the comic in the fall called the declassified issue where you can see just the line art because the color the great thing is the colorist that i work with is so good but sometimes the color obscures all that line art right. so right. so you'll get two bites at the apple with this but look and now i mean i just looked at the credits page i, I just had the credits page open in the new issue and i mean it reads like a who's who of comic royalty yeah everyone right. that you could want i mean like Com that's I mean, kevin eastman neil adams yeah, like like two kings right. two kings uh, dropped in to finish the Snake Eyes story with me. So I think it gives a little extra. Um, let's be honest, comic books is about art. Yeah. If not, then we're reading novels. And right. I'm not in the novel business. I'm in the comic book business. Right. So that some of these great artists just jumped on and it's 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 such a blast. I cannot wait for people to have it in their hands. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited for you. I mean, like it, like like you said, it was like this, like one thing came together and then all the ships kind of fell into place. Oh, yeah. And then, you, you got neat when you get neil adams on board you get everybody you get everybody um so i have to ask just because um you brought it up earlier uh briefly about the movie uh how are you feeling how how that might turn out in like in a few weeks when it opens um so my my i my hopes are high and i have nothing but everything i've seen i think looks fantastic it, right. it, it has it has the, the state of the art production values that make it look as good as anything else coming out right now. I mean, look, here's the deal. I've said this before. I'm going to say this now. My snake eyes, the issue one through five is very action driven, right? My story is driven by action. And, and it's weird because so many comics today don't have a lot of movement. Uh, I, I bought a big important issue two weeks ago of a big important comic and nobody threw a punch. Nobody kicked anybody. Nobody so much as raised a hand. It was just people pontificating, giving speeches and, and comics have forgotten to move. Now, how, the, how does this tie into the Snake Eyes movie? Here's the deal. The cinematic, all the studios know this because they've had their eyes focused since John Wick premiered in 2014. 
that audiences will show up for this new level of stunt driven action. Yeah. And whether and, and and what what you know Chad and David who directed the first John Wick they came from doing all the stunt coordination on Winter Soldier on Civil War they worked right. under the Russos Sam Hargrave who directed Extraction yep. with uh, with Chris Hemsworth was the guy that followed them and did the next stunts for the Russos we we are seeing this these stunt guys are now the go to directors because they know that the audiences want things to move. Look at uh, Charlize Theron, I mean, Atomic Blonde. Right. I mean, David, David Leach gets, gets Atomic Blonde, he, get, he, get, he, gets, he gets Deadpool 2, he gets Hobbs and Shaw, he just did Bullet Train, action, 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 action. The industry understands that, we, that, that, that audiences want this next level of stunt-driven action. And Snake Eyes with Henry Golding looks like it, that, that shot where he, on the motorcycle and jumping yeah, between yeah. the big rigs. Uh, that's fantastic. I mean, come on, that, that, no, takes it it away. And, and I think, I think these movies, it's harder for them to one up each other. And they're, 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 they have to be even more creative with the action that they're presenting. So it's really fun to watch. Um, I think it's a slightly new take, right? A prequel, right. a story right. we haven't heard. But here's the deal. I know I was talking to Larry Hama, who walks, who actually does a cover to Snake Eye, I think over Larry for the Snake Eyes Five. But Larry, gave snake eyes his endorsement larry created snake eyes that's good that's awesome if larry if larry doesn't endorse he signs larry, off on it then yeah. if we yeah if, if we don't follow larry's lead what are we doing um so so and and larry is not a guy that can be bought and sold right. he is a veteran of this business like neil adams he's in the in his senior years and when you get in your senior years you really speak your mind above all else no of course <laughs> i mean no i mean and i appreciate that more than anything i rather yeah. People not sugarcoat it then. So no, I could not be more excited. Snake Eyes looks badass. It looks yeah. like a brand new chapter. I hope that this is the movie that gets the whole Joe universe up and running big time. I, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, because you know, it kind of at least the live action movies it started off pretty rocky for a lot of people. So this it, it, looks like it, you know, they all launched in the Marvel age when Marvel was showing everybody else how to do it. And now it feels like people are catching up. Right. And again, you know, uh, I think they went for a very, it looks very action oriented, which I think is the right, absolutely the right approach. Right. And so, so I think it's going to be great. I'm very excited for it. Excited. Yeah, I mean, like you're right too, because you can't fake that anymore. Like when you're talking about the stunt people, you know, that, are, that started in that world and now they're directing these things. Like audiences are like, you know, they know what doesn't yep. look legit, what looks fake. And yep. now you have these people who have done this for a living who are now directing these action scenes that are completely out of this world now that, that yeah. are grounded. Like if you can make someone like Keanu Reeves, like you look like a complete badass or even Charlize Theron, like Atomic Blonde, like yeah. these are people that are making these people look so great because yes. they are, this is the background they come from. And that's, I mean, look at, look at Henry. Henry has gone from, you know, crazy rich Asians to suddenly yeah. He's kicking everybody's ass in Snake Eyes. He went from like, yeah, he was in that last Christmas movie. Yeah, uh, yep. he and now he's a guy. Be now everybody's he's gonna be everybody's new yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I kind of want to briefly go through. I know you have. Uh, I have to bring up X Force. Sure. Um, my babies. Yeah, uh, you know, thirty years ago, um, you know, it kind of became this like monstrous thing. Yeah. And then now, you know, I know in November you're doing like this kind of one shot thing. Yes. Uh, with X Force, huge. And I kind of was curious, you know, how was it going into trying to do this in 2021 compared to when you did it way? Back? Oh, that that's easy. I haven't changed. Oh, My yeah, will not change. Right. You know, X Force resonated for a reason. We were part of. I was part of a group of artists who was pushing the envelope, who was breaking out of the grid, who was changing the way comics looked, the way they were designed, the way pages moved. Right. Um, I, I, guys like Jeff Johns and Robert Kirkman have told me the profound influence that my New Mutants and my X-Force work had on them, the stories, the reveals. And so, you know, this is going to be this uh, double-sized, one-shot, um, amazing, uh, look, it'll feel like a whole lot of fan service because that's what I do. You yeah. know, I'm not going to get, Cable is going to be, you know, firing a giant oversized gun and there will be tons of double-bladed katanas uh slashing from shatterstar but again the the i when marvel asked me i gave them a one sentence 
five X Force teams are assembled from to, to wage the final battle on their nemesis strife. And, and so that means you get five cables, five shatter stars. Yeah. And uh, I, I mean, we've got Venom Pool, we've got Deadpools, we've got Major X. Um, it is a giant romp. Uh, a book called X Force should never be about anything other than action, momentum. Right. There's a huge emotional component at the end, but we're going to be faster, harder, bigger. Because look, I think today's, I I'm better at what I do now. And uh, I'll just tell you, I never am far from my spirit animal, which is Jack Kirby. And you, there is not a Jack Kirby book that exists that does not punch you in the face and, and, and kick you in the nads, okay? Right, right, exactly. <laughs> he wanted to move you and move the page and was very loud and possibly louder than anybody that ever did comics. And we, an image, the image guys, we tried to ramp that up and, and, uh, and be just as loud or louder so expect a very loud, raucous, fun uh, revisitation of, of all these characters in a giant kind of, I mean, the, the title's kill shot for a reason. Yeah. A, a reason. It, 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 this is a very important mission for the team to execute. So I, I hope people join me. I'm excited. The response has been through the roof. Yeah, I know. I have friends, uh, you know, so I, I grew up collecting comic books i sadly dropped off in my mid-20s i'm 36 now okay. i just like i just other interests and then like i started i went to i went to film school and like started to focus on that but i can remember those issues even as a kid there was just something that looked different something that popped different for us like especially like you know like you said the look of it was different the way the stories moved was completely different um more they were more like action oriented too like there was so much of it that just kind of popped off the page and I was like yes. talking about that with my friends when I was like preparing for this and like it kind of brought me back to that place of like this is what I remember collecting so much when I was a kid and what I fell in love with as a kid when it came to comic books so yeah. I'm actually as a you know wanting to get back in that again I'm very excited to see that in November because I think it'll be a good kind of like you're like, gonna get a shot in the arm you're gonna get a, it's gonna be better than the vaccine buddy Oh, sure. more punch okay <laughs> um, i'm telling you we're, we're I, look people forget and i do wonder why comics have strayed so much from being action oriented the, right. the, the comics i grew up on were very action oriented so the comic books that i then gave you were me trying to keep up with i grew up on right now like i said there's entire issues where it's people walking around in the forest talking and i'm like i don't need this i, right. I need to see some whoop ass right exactly. I'm, because comic books have no budget. Right. I can throw a planet at you. Um, for, <laughs> exactly. Throw multiple planets exactly. on the page, and it costs me my pencil and my eraser. So, uh, you know, I just don't understand why the comics don't push the envelope more. But that being what it is, X Force, Kill Shot, November, I, I think people are going to really dig it. And by the way, you can have a really good story and a very action oriented. Of course uh, you can. That's you what can we do. Yeah. And look, Raiders of the Lost Ark right. never takes a second off. And it is a great story. Right, exactly. It is a great story with action set piece after action set piece after. And again, the John Wook movies are tons of fun. They your story also doesn't have to be overly complicated to be entertaining. Exactly. Okay. So, so I would be remiss while I have you before um, we end this. Um, I want to ask you at least one question about uh, Deadpool three, if I can. Yeah. Um, you know, the first movie comes out. Um, Critics love it. Audiences really love it. Makes a ton of money. Second one, similar reception. There's all this momentum. And then that momentum kind of gets stalled because, you know, the, the Fox Disney sure, sure. happens. And then Deadpool gets kind of, you know, in, lumped into like the MCU and trying to figure out well, what do we do now that right. it's with Marvel Studios. Um, I know, I think the last thing I heard is that they did have writers working on a script yeah. for it. Um, but is it still kind of just in that phase delayed so, or so they don't look here's what people need to understand and 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 i i remember reading if you read kevin feige's quote in the deadpool 3 announcement back in december he speaks about ryan reynolds the way ryan should be spoken about very important and almost in a way that i have not heard him speak about the other talent um and maybe it's because kevin helped some of that talent become who they were now right. Right. you know he gave chris hemsworth his big break he gave jeremy renner 
the big role, you know, right. he, he probably, you know, changed the course of Scarlett Johansson's career by casting her as Black Widow. I mean, she was, she had a great career, but now she has a mega career, yeah. a giant movie coming out. Right. Ryan and Deadpool succeeded without the MCU. Exactly. Deadpool made more money than Doctor Strange, than Ant-Man, than a couple of Thor movies and some Captain America movies. I mean, Deadpool, uh, y y you'll be shocked. The first Tom Holland Spider-Man movie, the first one mm -hmm. with Iron Man, Deadpool made more, more money than that movie. Um, Ryan uh, is the engine that all of this depends on. And so when they made that announcement uh, and said that Ryan was directing, I mean, not directing, sorry, producing. Yeah and supervising the script that showed me finally that there's been a meeting of the minds and there's mutual respect and that Kevin recognizes how important all of Ryan's contributions are because Ryan is not just showing up in the costume. Right. Ryan co-wrote the sequel. He's the he idea produced, man. Yeah, yeah. He produced the first movie. People forget Ryan is a producer on Deadpool one. He is a producer on Deadpool two. So, um, I just think, you know, like you said, you said it, you said it perfectly. The momentum kind of stalled. Thank we are probably on X-Force 2 and Deadpool 4. Uh, if the Fox if purchase, yeah. and, 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 and let me, let's, let's just be, I'm gonna, I need silence for one minute as I'm going to say this. So hang on, I'm going to wind up. They bought Fox for $70 billion, $70 billion. And prior to them buying it, the president of Fox told me, and he didn't need to, by the way. When you drove onto the Fox lot, Deadpool was now the big giant painting on the wall that used to be occupied by Star Wars. And the president of Fox had told me, Deadpool is the number one priority for us here at Fox. It is our biggest brand. It is our most successful, most profitable movie. And we did Avatar. Um, and, and so then, then Disney buys them. And again, there's a incubation period kind of it goes into the deep storage and everybody figures it out but the great news is look if ryan isn't on board and if ryan's not, not on board you're not getting deadpool you're just not you're not getting it so ryan's on board kevin is on board with ryan and we're all going to benefit from it the thing is in that period because ryan is so in demand He's booked like seven movies. Yeah, it's okay. Stuff, yeah. I mean, the guy has worked nonstop. He's that in demand. Right. So, you know, now we have to wait for the schedules to catch up. And I'm sure it's going to be great. I, I'm telling you right now, the fact that when that announcement was made, that meant that a meeting of the minds had finally something I was frankly worried about. I got to be honest, right. I, I was worried because I think it's Kingmaker meets Kingmaker. Right, exactly. Sometimes when two kings meet, there, you know, there's some tension. But yeah. clearly, it all worked out, and things are good. That's good, kid. I think I think fans will take any groundswell they can take, right? So, like, even getting that announcement, it was like, okay, things are still yeah. they're still moving. Um, you know, I know that some fans are worried, like, oh, it's at Marvel Studios, it's associated with Disney, they're gonna mess with the R rating and all that stuff. Like, um, they've said they're gonna keep it R. I'm gonna take them at their word, and you know as well as I do, and, and I'm telling you, having not been to a premiere of any sort in 16 months. When I was at Black Widow last week and that Marvel logo came on screen, the crowd went nuts. The yeah. MCU has, it, I tell my kids this all the time. My, my, my youngest child wants to argue with me and tell me that Pokemon is in fact <laughs> the biggest brand in the world. And I say, no son, Marvel is the biggest brand in the world. And I believe that. Killer. And so now having, <laughs> dead, when that Deadpool movie starts and the MCU credits roll before it, people are going to lose their minds. Because you know he's going to interact with the more MCU in some capacity, and people are going to lose their minds. Yeah, so it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Yeah, we just gotta be patient. I think that's. I mean, I, I, I think we're not used to being patient, but you know, it's. Yeah. Well, and then the pandemic said, "I know, hold my, yeah. beer. hold my beer." Like, like, screw your patience, and like, yeah. this is what's gonna go yeah. on. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, this has been really, really great. I mean, I like I said, like I told my friends I was going to talk to you, and uh, you've just made me the envy of a lot of them so i appreciate it i enjoyed so much hanging out with you man this was a really this was a blast let's do it again soon for sure you're very easy to talk to as well like you know I, i'm just actually starting doing uh these for the site so uh hey, you gosh, you're doing easy. great you, you, you're, you're doing great i thoroughly enjoyed this there'll, there'll be more projects soon some stuff i wish i could talk to you about that i can't 
but and I'm sure we'll be talking about it and I'll make sure it's you I'm talking to. Oh, for sure. Thank you so much, man. I greatly appreciate it. <laughs>